we are very excited to be to be launching Orca, which is our flagship software enablement of Max Stadium resources uh, around the globe. Orca is taking taking advantage of other very popular technologies like Docker containers, like uh, uh, Kubernetes orchestration engines, um, which are tools that that most software development teams are very familiar with. So to simplify how to get access to Max Stadium Mac, Mac resources, that's really the objective of Orca and we're very excited about it. Orca is orchestration with Kubernetes on Apple and it is the only way to use native Kubernetes commands to create, control, and automate Mac OS VMs. With Orca, we take a full weight Mac OS VM and put it inside of a Docker container and that allows us to use Kubernetes hooks to create, control, spin up, spin down, pause, duplicate, uh, and load balance those containers holding the VMs across a pool of Mac hardware. Uh, so it really gives developers and DevOps teams a set of tools that they are used to using everywhere else and have a ton of power. And now they can finally have access to that on a Mac cloud. Development in general is moving towards uh, more agile, more developer controlled environments and that starts with Docker and Kubernetes, but in the Mac ecosystem that's not a thing. Um, and we felt like if we could bridge those two worlds and make development for mobile more consistent for Apple developers like it was for every other developer, that would be super valuable. And at Mac Stadium we're always looking for ways to really improve the performance and maximize the hardware that people have and this is a way for us to really control that. Folks that we've talked to in the community are really excited about Orca because it gives them access to standard tooling to control their Mac VMs for the first time ever. What people are used to is having to learn a totally new set of tools, whether it's VMware or Anka or random bare metal commands. Uh, Kubernetes has become the default choice for anyone who's managing cloud infrastructure and we're really excited to be able to bring that set of powerful tools to iOS and Mac app developers and the DevOps teams that support them. One of the things that Apple developers struggle with is that they have to build on genuine Apple hardware. So that's why we've designed Orca to work on top of a Mac Pro on the base layer. That means that even though we're running KVMs inside of Docker containers and using tools like Kubernetes, which are well known to work across all kinds of clouds, there's always a Mac at the bottom, so you're always guaranteed to be in compliance with Apple's requirements. And with this technology, we are making sure that we keep Mac OS on Apple hardware. We just happen to be putting a lot of technology around orchestration and flexibility in between all of that. Basically, uh, we take a virtual Mac OS and put it inside of a Docker container, and then Docker containers can live in Kubernetes. We then take what we know about Mac infrastructure and we create a giant cluster of Mac everywhere and let containerized uh, Mac OS VMs live in that cluster. So now you basically can scale and control your Mac environment just like anybody else. The way we assemble Orca is that we start with a bare metal Mac we put a Linux layer on top of the Mac OS, and then on top of that it goes Kubernetes, on top of that goes Docker, inside a Docker container goes a virtual machine that is Mac OS, whichever current flavor of the OS you want. And then as a user you can orchestrate pods of those VMs across the Kubernetes cluster. Orca has three different ways to interact. It has a API where you can write your own commands to the Orca API. It also has a CLI, which is an interactive help-driven command line. That's probably the predominant way developers will use it. It's very similar to a, a Docker or Kubernetes command line. And then there's also a UI. The UI at this stage is really a opinionated view of how you would visualize the API commands. And then as we move forward, there's gonna be reporting and monitoring kind of mixed into that depending on user preference. We're very excited about Orca and performance. Uh, in our initial testing, our goal was to make sure that it performed at least as well as anything else that we offer. What we've found is that we're exceeding all of our expectations, and that is one of the fastest platforms we've ever seen run on Mac Stadium. In our testing, we've seen that Orca runs at bare metal speeds, which is pretty amazing. 
Uh, we've been able to achieve that by really tuning the way that the KVM is built and the way that that flows through the Docker container down to the base OS. Because we're using open source software all through the stack, we're able to really fine tune that and optimize it for build jobs. It's very left of center for how you would typically use Docker and Kubernetes. There are very Linux-based, lightweight technologies, and we're sticking a full Mac OS inside of a container, which is kind of completely the opposite of what you normally want to do. And then there's a lot of sort of sideways thinking around how you make Kubernetes and Docker work with Mac OS, which is not a normal convention. A lot of times when we tell people about Orca, they say, that's exactly what I would have done, or I had that idea two years ago. And that's awesome. We think that means that it's a good idea, but it was also really hard to do. We've been working on it for about three or four years now and finally are ready to take it to market. Orca brings uh, the ease of use and the scalability of an AWS or an Amazon to the iOS ecosystem for Apple developers. It brings speed, agility, and ease of use to the development team so that they can use tools designed for them to really scale out and build a cloud as easy as possible.